Welcome back to another player review on the channel, guys. Today, EA dropped for us on his birthday in Golo Kante's Fut birthday card. Now, this is one of the most expensive SPCs of the year that I can remember. My club is absolutely destroyed doing this. So if you enjoy this video, guys, make sure you do leave a like. It's going to cost you a 90 rated squad, an 89, two 89s, I think, an 88, an 87, an 86, and an 83. And with how expensive fodder is right now, you're going to struggle to get this card done. So I'm here to provide you guys with the most in-depth analysis I can of this card, see if he is worth it or not. Now, he does look good. Of course, he's got the Winter Wild card already in the game that has a three-star weak foot and two-star skills. This one has three-star skills and a five-star weak foot. That's really, really nice to see. He's five foot six with medium-high work rates, arguably one of the best players over the years on FIFA. So good at jockeying, really fast, and an awesome card. He's got 81 pace, with 86 dribbling, 76 shooting, 91 defending, 83 passing, and 86 physical. In terms of traits, he's got injury prone, which he is very much injury prone nowadays, unfortunately. And he's also got the leadership trait. And in terms of alternates, he can play CDM and centre mid. Now, you guys know that I wax lyrical about players with five-star weak foot in the midfield. And Golo Kante has that. And that is massive for this card. He's always had uh, two or three-star weak foot. So to see that get upgraded to five is massive for this car. Premier League and French as well makes him very easy to link, but he's at easily over a million coins, which is quite concerning. But we're going to look at this card as a card that can go past team of the season. This is the creme de la creme of Fuck Birthday. There is no chance we get a better SPC than this in terms of the quality of card. Let's go across and take a look at his in-games. He's actually got okay shooting. His pace split is a little bit weird with 87 acceleration and 76 sprint speed. As I said, his shooting is okay for a CDM with 83 attack positioning, 75 finishing, 82 shot power, and 76 long shots. His passing, whilst it's only 83 on the base card, is actually quite good as well. 86 vision with 92 short pass and 85 long pass is definitely good enough for N'Golo Kante. His agility is a little bit lower, 83, but his balance is brilliant at 96. And of course, as I said, one of the best jockeying CDMs, if not the best jockeying CDM on FIFA history ever. So... To see that agility and balance there is really nice. 97 reactions is brilliant on a midfielder. 85 for ball control and dribbling is also really good. 90 composure as well. You cannot fault that at all. His defensive stats are unbelievable. If head and accuracy wasn't a thing in the defensive stats, we're looking at like 97 defending here with 95 interceptions, 94 defensive awareness, 97 stand tackle and 90 slide tackle. His jumping's not bad as well. He is five foot six. He's got 80 jumping. He's got 99 stamina, which is lovely. 76 strength and 97 aggression. Now, when I heard that this was coming out, I thought, you know, he's going to be stupid expensive. Am I going to be even be able to complete him? Luckily, we were able to complete him. And I thought a shadow would be the best for him. But now I look at the actual stats. I'm not sure that's the case. We are going to apply a few and take a look at a few chem cells for him. First of all, I just want to take a look at a, if I can find it, a catalyst. Now, I'm not necessarily going to go with this chemsol, guys, but I just want to see what it does for his passing. And it's really good for his passing, but doesn't really boost that vision, unfortunately, which is a little bit disappointing. Goes up to 95 acceleration there and 84 sprint speed, which is a good boost. I do think you do need to boost the pace on Kante. And the passing upgrade is really nice. And, you know, at the end of the day, you want to boost his pace, but is it kind of a waste boosting his pace with defending because you know, he's already got insane defending stats. So you're kind of shoehorned in to either a catalyst or an anchor, even though an anchor is a bit of a waste once again, or an engine could be quite good for him. We're going to use our last engine here and take a look at that as well. And with the engine, it's actually quite a nice boost. You know, you get that plus four to the agility, 99 balance and a 93 dribbling, probably a bit of a waste on this card. Although when you do look at the vision, it goes up to 90, the short pass up to 96, and the long pass up to 89 is probably a good boost for him. Plus four to the pace, up to 85 pace as well. I think is a really good boost for this card. I think I'm actually going to stick with an engine. Originally, I thought a shadow, but with them defending the stats, there's literally no point, guys. We're playing on old gen first. Let's get into a few games with Kante and see if he is worth the crazy SPC price. For cheap FIFA 23 coins, make sure to check out MMOEXP.com to get fast and reliable coins. And make sure you use code VIPER at checkout. Get yourself a 5% discount. All right then, guys, expect this to be a bit of a longer review as we're going to be live for a little bit longer, I think, because I want to talk about Kante and why he's good and if he is worth 
the price it is going to come in at and you know is it going to last you past team of the season that's going to be something that's going to be quite interesting to take a look at but trying him in the center mid role first as this card really isn't that bad in terms of going forward you know he's got okay stats in that regard not the best obviously and you can't really be doing too much of him going forward but you want to test out this dribbling you want to test out that sprint boost with him and so far yeah that weak foot is so nice have on kante that's just so good for this card because it kind of has ruined his cards you know his team of the year card a few years back was absolutely insane but then it was kind of ha hampered by the fact he had a two-star weak foot or a three-star weak foot i can't remember exactly what it was but you know he, he's not got the strength and that's where you've got to be careful it's all well and good using this card but you've got to remember that he doesn't have the strength he's more of that kind of you know defensive jockey around the pitch very quickly kind of player you know and that is what you should use this card as and he doesn't feel slow but he certainly doesn't feel like the Kante of old like super super fast and um, that I remember anyway and I think this is a, a bit of a coin sink before uh, team of the season starts because team of the season isn't far away now I like the way this guy's playing it's allowed me to really test out Kante as that defensive kind of um, jockeying speed and all that kind of stuff but he, he's really good at just kind of annoying the opponent like this but because he's so weak, it does cause an issue, doesn't it? It really, really does. Um, and he's not going to win anything in the air for you. Even, you know, he, he might have good jumping, but... Or decent jumping for his height. But, you know, he's not going to win a lot in the air for you. He is very much meant to be that kind of between-the-lines player. And utilize him going forward when you can. Because he's not the worst going forward. Um, but you can see that he just doesn't look very fast. So maybe we are going to have to go with a Shadow or Catalyst on him, unfortunately. Which I kind of was hoping we weren't going to have to do. But it looks like we might have to. Man, he's so weak in them scenarios there, unfortunately. But look at this jockey in here. Like, this guy can't move. That's what Kante's really good at. Now, we have been using him an awful lot there. His stamina's absolutely drained. And this guy's a good player as well. This is for 10-0 and in playoffs. So that's how I know that this guy's a good player as well. Heavy touch there from Militao. Into Kante again. So let's test him out, you know, see what his passing is like, see what his driving forward is like. He's so small in game as well. Um, and that's something, that, you know, can really affect you. It'd be nice if they gave him the, the four-star skills, actually, in my opinion. But his passing's not bad. I feel like he has to find that, though. Uh, his passing's certainly not bad. And, you know, he, he, he doesn't feel slow coming back. But you can certainly feel that he doesn't feel as fast as the previous Kante's, you know. And... I personally haven't tried out the Winter Wildcard. I've never got it in draft, actually, either. Um, so this is really my first time using Kante all year. Maybe I've done this gold card right at the start of the game. Um, so, oh, it's passing. It's a little bit disappointing, even with this engine on. So, yeah. I really do think we are going to go to a Shadow or a Hunter, guys. Not a Hunter, sorry. Or a Catalyst. And it's all well and good, him being, you know, better on the jockey. But it's a minimal upgrade, isn't it? So... I think we'll try. That's nice from Kante. Hasn't managed to get the ball back though. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, nice. He's very good at kind of getting himself about though still. That is what you are getting with Kante. His insane jockeying speed. And it's no different here either, guys. His jockeying is brilliant for sure. That's a nice pass from Kante. We need a bit more of that. Now he's playing deeper in that CDM role. Want to see what his long passing's like. Really, it's really going to be quite important if this card's going to be any good or not. Nice from Kante there, but guys, no different to like a Chabi Alonso so far. No, his jockeying's good, but that's about it. I have to say about him. That was such a nice pass there from Kante. Yeah, see, there's a lot of that with him. It's Raheem Sterling, man. He's got to be doing better there. I don't, I don't know, guys. I feel like this is an absolute coin sink for a card that is good. But, man, he is disappointing. It's a nice ball again from Kante. Unfortunately, Gibbs White can't get on the end of it. Man, he, he, he's, he's really, really disappointed me in this first game, guys. Maybe it's the chem style. But he seems like he's so far behind everybody else. Yeah, see what I mean? Like, every pass just seems too weak. 
I, I really don't understand it. He's got an engine on him too, but he he just does not feel the card that he used to feel. I mean, his passing's good, man. His passing's good. Like sometimes it just feels like absurdly weak for no reason, though. I just don't understand that. The only thing I'm a bit confused about, this this guy's playing so toxic as well. But Kante's one of them cards that you kind of don't use, if that makes sense. He's just kind of there, doing his job. And you notice him not very often, but that's actually kind of a good thing. But still, you know, I, I've got Barella in this team here, right? I think Barella is as good as this card. I really, truly do. Nice from Kante there. See, oh, I just want to be able to drive out there. He just doesn't have the strength to do it. The pressure he puts on, though, is really, really nice. And I think that's quite valuable. And he's, he, See, look, I, I feel like with the engine on, he should be able to play that pass. We're definitely, definitely taking off the engine. Find that then, Kante. Oh, what a ball. Yes, there we go. Finally managed to score against this guy, man, and take the lead in this game. So toxic, guys, honestly. Kante is definitely, definitely, definitely good. Um, he's actually a lot better when you're not controlling him. I know that sounds ridiculous, but he is an AI player completely and is able to just pick a good pass like that every now and then. And that is literally it with this Kante. Like, there's nothing more to really say about him. Good positioning, better when you don't control him, um, and has really good jockey speed, to be honest. I have to say that five star weak foot is really clutch on a CDM. I really do have to say that. Uh, good card, good card, just a little bit slow, in my opinion. Definitely going to put a shadow on him for the second game. All right, then, guys, time for the game on new gen with Kante. We put a shadow on him now. Just going to try the shadow, and you know. I was a little bit disappointed with him in that first game, but I might have been using him a bit wrong, or the engine might have just been the wrong chem style. So now we've got the shadow on him. He's maxed out on everything, basically. I don't think he's too bad going forward. I just think... My goalkeeper's taking my corners, by the way. I need to, need to sort that out. I don't think he's necessarily bad. I just don't think I should be noticing him. And I think that sounds ridiculous. But he's that kind of card that... What a pass that is. He's that kind of card that shouldn't be used um if that makes any sense he's more there find a simple pass back into him find another simple pass on that five star weak foot look back into him for that little pass look for another one just like that and then when it comes to it he can do his defensive duties too his dribbling isn't bad um certainly feels insane over on new gen here early doors i don't really know why he's here mind can we get a goal with him or an assist i mean he's already got a few assists to be fair to him He's too high up there, though. He's too high up. Let's get him a bit further back. You shouldn't be doing this with Kante. You should just let him do this organically. Um, and that is something I would say I've noticed massively. Um, I really, really don't think you should control him ne nearly as much as I am here. Let him do his job defensively. I mean, that's a power shot, but okay. You just don't want to control him too much, is what I'm trying to say. And that's the kind of card that he is, guys. Um, I like him. Is he worth what he's coming in at? Probably not. You know, he's like, what, 1.8 million? I think I saw when I was getting the uh, card for the thumbnail. That is not worth it. That is not worth it. Not in this climate when we've got Rivaldo and stuff there. No chance. No chance at all. As I said, his passing is decent. He's got decent driven passes. They're, they're not spectacular, but you can certainly find them, as you can see there. What a finish. That is from Tony Martial. Let's get into one more game with him. Guys, last game with N'Golo, N'Golo, Conte. And let's see what we do with him. You know, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to explain on the on the go here instead of like leaving it all for the end. Because I don't know if you guys watch the gameplay. If you do, leave a like on the video and comment if you have got this far. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's he, he certainly feels a bit strange for a CDM, right? You know, you've got players like Makalele who are somewhat similar. But Conte has an extra bit of dribbling ability. Um, which not a lot of these kind of cards have. That's brilliant from him there. 
It's brilliant. And as I said, don't control him too much, and I think he will love him. Um, he's certainly one of them cards that you just shouldn't be controlling. 100%. And I will say that I do think he is better than a lot of the CDMs we've got. I wouldn't say he's better than Makalele. Um, I would probably just about say, because of the five-star weak foot, he's probably a little bit better than Alonso. But it's it's marginal. It is marginal. And, and I suppose that's what FIFA is all about nowadays. It's all about small margins. And a lot of things come down to these small margins, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I guess it's just kind of up to you, right? I found his long balls to be a little bit disappointing as well. Uh, but overall, man, you cannot fault it. You cannot fault it. He's a decent card, but just don't control him. Just don't control him, because then he'll get too high up the pitch. And that's not what you want. As you can see there, even though he hasn't won the ball back, he's kind of meant to be there to do that kind of stuff, because his defensive AI is so good, because his defensive stats are so high, and his defensive awareness is so good. When you don't control him, you get a lot more out of him. He's very good at man marking. He's very good at finding the, the lanes to cut out just, just on his own. And then just look for a nice pass of him. Look for these kind of passes here. Don't look for that one. See what I mean? Every time you control him, it seems like you can't really tackle with him. If that makes any sense? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if that does, but he's certainly a really interesting card. And especially if you're playing in a narrow formation with him as a singular CDM... You need to be careful with this card. I think he definitely suits a two CDM uh, formation a little bit better. Not to say he's bad in the one pivot, but as I say, just try try your best not to control him too much. I think you will quite enjoy him. If you do control him a lot, though, I, th I think this isn't the kind of card for you. If you like controlling your CDMs and controlling your defensive players, like I do, as you can see, all of the time, probably not going to be the card for you guys. All right, guys, so we played three games with N'Golo Kante, and <sighs> is he worth 1.8 million? There is not a chance in hell this card is worth that much, unfortunately. Yes, he's good. Yes, he's good at his job. An issue for me is, though, I like to control all of my players. I like to control my centre-backs. I like to be really aggressive with them. And if you're that kind of player, you're going to hate this N'Golo Kante because he's so small, and he's, he, he's annoying to play against, but... Because he's small, his tackles don't stick. Because he's small, he's not that strong and he can't get involved, even though he's got really high aggression. It's difficult to tackle with him. It's difficult to have a physical battle with him. So this card is basically if you like to control or don't like to control, I should say, your CDM. If you don't control your CDM, this is probably the best pivot on the game right now, other than maybe Jude Bellingham, um, team of the year, I would say. If you control your CDM, though, you're not going to enjoy him one bit. His passing's quite good. His over-the-tops are quite poor. And whilst his defensive stats are absolutely insane, you know, even with the shadow applied, 99 on everything other than defensive awareness and, of course, head and accuracy, his tackle still didn't stick, which was really, really shameful. And I'd say if you like controlling your CDM, which I've said an awful lot now, and I do apologise for that, you would enjoy someone like Taram or Chevy Alonso a lot more. They're a bit more dynamic. Whilst Kante does have a bit of dynamism about him, he can't drive into spaces as well as Xabi Alonso, as Turan, and that is causing an issue um, to where this definitely, definitely, definitely isn't the Kante of old, but I still think he's a good card, and I think if he was priced at maybe like seven, eight, nine, even a million coins, I think it'd be a bit more justifiable. At two million coins almost, absolutely, definitely not, do not do this card, guys. Even, you know, if you're looking for that marginal upgrade, yes, he's better than a lot of CDMs that you will use, is he even better than Lofa Mateus in CDM? I would say no. Um, he doesn't really fit this game too well, but it's not even just that. It's, it's the fact that this just doesn't feel like N'Golo Kante of the past few years, which is kind of similar to the way he has been in real life. He's not the same Kante anymore. Um, I love him to bits. I think he's an awesome player, and I think he's an awesome card. But just way too expensive. And yes, the five-star weight foot is really nice to have on Kante, I'm going to use him as my CDM until probably after team of the season or until we get our first team of the season rewards. But really, really underwhelming card for how much he costs, guys. I'm going to rate the value of this one a genuine 0 out of 10. Quality of the card. On old gen, I'm going to go for an 8 out of 10. On new gen, I'm also going to go for an 8 out of 10. He is not absolutely sublime like a lot of you were probably expecting. But guys, if you did enjoy today's video, please do leave a like on it. This cost me so many coins. 
subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell so you don't miss a pay review. But guys, that's going to be it for me for now, so take care.